Shimmer on our skin. 
I wanted to share this little purchase with you guys. I got these in Portland and we went to a, actually a stationery store and I saw these adorable sardine barrettes. Anyway, I absolutely love them and they're like the perfect like little clip style to hold your bangs back. And what else? Oh, and they got this. I love this. I grabbed this at Target. It's the Tangerine Shea Sugar Scrub. It smells so good. I love anything citrus. So fun little things I brought home with me. So I have tons of progress on my Hana sweater by Junko Okamoto. A, yeah, so here, <laughs> there's the front panel. And here is the back panel. And it says to uh, block these pieces. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that later today. And I have started the sleeve. So I need to make two of these. I've gotta put this aside for a bit though, because the birthday socks that I am making for Dan, I only have this one completed, but I am getting down to, uh, I gotta measure this out. He has a size 11 foot, so I'm going to make sure that this from here is nine inches, and then do the uh, decreases for the two inch toe. So that will be something I'll just start picking away at because his birthday's August 20th, so I wanna make sure that these are ready. But if I uh, give my sweater a break and concentrate on these socks, I can definitely have them done. So pretty.
It is Sunday, which for me means family dinner. I always try to get our family together on Sundays for supper, get the kids to come home, just to, you know, regroup and check in, but spend some time together. And it's an easy day, so I just got out of the pool. <laughs> we're having the best weather. The humidity finally broke, and we're just having, like, heat. None of that, like, crazy humidity. So it's been a nice day. Anyway, um... I showed some footage when I was at June's for our annual sleepover at her cottage. She always hosts um, our little sleepover, which always includes a craft. This year we did watercolor painting and um, we always, of course, end the night knitting. Um, and a meal, a nice meal. And it's funny because we always walk away from these get-togethers enabled or inspired by a new recipe, a new cookbook yarn, a project. So I came away with that pizza that she made was amazing. It was so good. She did a chicken Alfredo pizza. So I've heard of it before and I've never made it and I've never eaten it. And she made the best pizza. So I'm going to do it tonight for my family because I know they're going to love it. And I'll show you what you need. It's super easy, but I just wanted to share it with you because it's, like I said, it's easy and it's so tasty. Um, yeah, so I came away from our sleepover with a new recipe. I've ordered three new cookbooks, which I will wait till they arrive and I'm going to share them with you guys. What else? We decided to all make the turtle dove cardigan and I think that's it. I love these get togethers. And like I said, these girls always inspire me. Michelle and June have always the most amazing recipes in their repertoire, uh, knitting ideas that we love to share. So I'm going to share June's pizza with you guys. So hang on, I'll show you what you need. So I've got a few people coming tonight, so I'm gonna make two pizzas. And this compliments pizza dough from Sobeys is so, so good. So this is the dough I'm gonna use. Instead of pizza sauce, you use an Alfredo sauce. Uh, your next step is going to be a layer of shredded cheese and then you're going to go to your toppings. So I pre-cooked my chicken. I'm going to slice this up and add that to the pizza. Some sliced red onion, a few black olives. I pre-cooked some mushrooms and I'm going to put a few dollops of pesto on as well and then top it off again with more shredded mozzarella. Super easy, but so yummy. Okay, I'm getting ready to make the salad and I'm going to show you what I'm going to do. Um, in the bottom of the bowl, I've squeezed half of a lemon. I'm going to add a good drizzle of olive oil, a big handful of fresh parm, two or three pinches of this uh, sea salt, one minced clove of garlic. I'm going to toss it all together with, you can use romaine or whatever, I'm going to use this kale. And once the salad is tossed, chop up an avocado and mix it all together. It's super yummy and so good, so easy.
okay, I have all four pieces done. So the back and the front panel are identical. So you do two pieces of those and um, anyway, it looks like it's in three different pieces. It's not, you're just uh, keeping the yarn on your needle and just rotating the project. So I believe I started with this panel and then went to this one and to that one and then you repeat it and I've got the sleeves done so this part will connect to the shoulder and there's the kind of the cuff so both are done I need to block these pieces to measure out what the dimensions are showing on the pattern. Okay, I've got my Hannah blocking. So here's the sleeves and the two panels. So I started with the back panel and you can tell my gauge was super loose because the front and back panel are knit identically, but this one's a lot smaller. So anyway, I'm sure it'll match up fine. So here's the color. I think I want for my contrast. These are my old Nike blazer kicks and I love that yellow. So let's see. I think it's going to be a fun contrast. It's kind of thinking pink, but I think I like that a lot better. So haven't found anything yarn wise to buy. So I'm going to dye something up. And then when these pieces are blocked, I'm going to seam them all together and there's the contrast that will happen and hopefully I can dye that shade pretty good because I do like it. Alrighty, I'll keep you updated. I'd share some new cookbooks that I just got. Uh, when we were at June's Cottage last week, she had made a recipe out of this book, The Side Gardener, Recipes and Notes from My Garden by Rosie Dakin. If you're a cookbook lover, I'm sure you've already heard of this author. Uh, June made, I'm gonna just get that page to show you. A recipe it was so good it was like homemade crackers and um, oh here it is okay it's called nutty fruit crackers Let's see if I can get that in there anyway so yeah she said she basically baked a loaf and then you slice it up and rebake it it was delicious it was full of cranberries and raisins and nuts and it went beautifully with a really nice selection of cheeses that she had out. 
So when we asked for this recipe, she had brought out this cookbook and we got looking at it. It's absolutely beautiful. I love a good cookbook that has um, lots of pictures. I mean, aesthetically, everything is just gorgeous. The photography, but all of the recipes have a really good picture and I know that's important to a lot of people, but <laughs> I really like to see and have you know an idea of how I mean sometimes even just to serve it or how to display it but there this whole book was so beautiful with the pictures everything how they have it laid out for your snacks and appetizer um, but yeah so I was just going through it and there was so many recipes that I would absolutely love to try and nothing is out of the ordinary for ingredients or putting it all together roasted carrot dip that sounds good rhubarb rosemary shrub so this is the first one and then June was showing me another Rosie Dakin cookbook that she has it's called butter Baked Goods, Nostalgic Recipes from a Little Neighborhood Bakery. Anyway, everything is just so pretty immediately about this book. And then when you open it up, they actually used the wallpaper that was on the wall for the index. I like to mark all my cookbooks with my name and the date that I get them. But same thing, this cookbook was full. Not only is it beautifully done with pictures, but the recipes are all absolutely recipes that I would love to try. Somewhere in here, there's a homemade marshmallow recipe. Uh, twice a week, morning glory muffins. Banana chocolate loaf. So many pretty ideas in here. Chocolate caramel shortbread, yum. Oh, this really appealed to me, the tropical biscotti. I think that would be nice to make and wrap up in parchment paper as like a hostess gift. Bars and slices. It's just such a pretty book. Oh, this, I thought that was beautiful if you had like a bridal or a baby shower to go to and had to bring a dessert, butter's coconut cake. So when I had these in my cart, um, it said you may be interested in this one as well. So I grabbed a third Rosie Dakin and I, I know this has been out for a while and I've actually heard other people talk about this, let me feed you. But I thought, let's, give this one a try too and so far after going through it it's not going to disappoint lemon thyme pancakes yum good old-fashioned white bread there's a little bit of everything in here um and you know and it's just sometimes maybe it's something that you're already making like <laughs> tuna and potato chip sandwich but to get inspired and kind of have a reminder once in a while of ideas, roasted tomato soup, green soup. We love soups in this house. Curried carrot soup, yum. There was one that's, oh, this one sounded really good. Mushroom pancetta soup. I love mushrooms. So if you were, oh, old school potato salad. That looks good. The fresh dill. Yeah, so if you're in the looks for some new cookbooks or maybe already have this author in your stash. Here's three that I just got and I can tell already I'm just gonna like love them and 100% get some ideas. You know, you just kind of fall out of idea land for recipes sometimes. So it is nice to uh, pop open a book. Oh, that sounds good, tomato casserole but the pictures are just beautiful. And I love a cookbook on display on my counter. And all of them are so beautiful. So, new acquisitions.
Happy Thursday. It is September the 5th and I sound terrible. I feel fine. I'm just getting over a cold. So please excuse the raspy voice. Um, I've been wanting to sit down for like weeks to catch up and show you what I've been up to. And yeah, we went from being super busy to I got sick and then, oh, anyway, I'm here. I'm ready. I have so much stuff to show you guys. So it could be a long one. I don't know. Uh, first time viewers, my name's Amanda. Uh, I'm the dyer behind Sweet Skein of Mine Yarn. I live in Fredericton, New Brunswick, East Coast, Canada. And this is just a video journal of my knitting, dyeing, the projects I'm conquering, um, future projects, journaling, cooking, all things crafts, whether it's making, painting, yeah, a little bit of everything. So it's fun to just sit down and share it with you all and maybe inspire you to make something or to think about trying something new. Uh, yeah, so summer has flown by. We have had a great one. I did some snippets <clears throat> of a little bit of this and that before I, you know, before I sat down to talk. And I guess I didn't capture everything because sometimes you're just kind of living in the moment, but we've had a great summer. It's flown by. We um, got away like little overnighters here and there throughout the summer. It was hard to commit to too much just because um, if you've watched this before, I'm in the process of moving. And so I've sold my house and my new house should be ready maybe by the end of the month, I'm not sure. But my builder seems to think so, but I'm like, wow, there's still like, well, I guess they're painting right now. The floors and cabinets and all that stuff still has to happen. But anyway, it's been a seamless project. Like my, I think what it comes down to, selling and building, um, just work with the right people, keep it super, super stress-free. And I don't know if you're with, just follow your gut and honestly I just decided to work with people that I knew would be no stress and my builder is like wonderful like he his lines of communication you know I could send him a message five minutes later I hear from him and vice versa so he's been so great and the suggestions and anyway the whole team that he has has been great so there's been no stress there I I'm literally moving the end of the month and yeah my house is sold so that's bittersweet because I have lived here for 24 years this is essentially my only home that I've ever had as a mom a wife I guess a grown-up and this is where we brought the kids home from the hospital so you know all the memories that we've made over these years have been like absolutely precious and whoever lives here is going to be super happy I've always said and other people say it too this house has a real happy juju about it if if you believe in any of that but it does and um, yeah we've made so many memories here and it's just been the gathering spot for so many people over the years and it's gonna be really really sad to leave um, but it's time just to move forward and, and you know what I'm so excited about my new house it's it's beautiful and the layout is proper to I guess grow old in and I still have room for the kids to ever come home if they need to but it's done it's happening so we've been so busy with that stuff that I haven't really had time to commit to a whole lot like I, I couldn't commit to Tatamagoosh I the um, sisterhood fiber um, fiber event that goes on in Tatamagoosh Nova Scotia it's such a good one I couldn't do it I had to back out of PEI because um, and that killed me because I had so much fun there last year and it's it's a big one it's a good one but I just couldn't it was more about like dyeing yarn and having it drying everywhere and then what if there was a house showing and so now even though the house is sold I just I couldn't I couldn't get that much work into being ready for a show like that but I have Gage Town on Saturday so Gage Town New Brunswick and this is I think my fourth or fifth year it's run by Sarah Shackleton of Crim Ross Farms and it is awesome it's calling for rain right now but fingers crossed it's gonna be okay 
Um, we have, I'm, I, I asked to be outside <clears throat> in a tent, but um, if, it, if it rains, we can go inside. We've got a backup plan. So anyway, if any of you locals are going, come say hi. I'll show you the goodies I'm gonna be bringing. What else? Um, I got to that bridal shower and gave Jessica her um, cozy comfort blanket and she loved it. And we got to her wedding. And funny enough, the night of her wedding, I had to leave. I couldn't stay for the party. I started to not feel well, like my chest was starting to burn and I was getting this cough. So I don't know if I had COVID again or if I just had that bad summer chest cold that's going around. But Anyway, I feel fine. I just sound horrible, uh, but hopefully it's not too annoying to listen to. I've done a ton of knitting, so my footage that I did to show you the Hana sweater, I did it in the fisherman's wool. I don't have the yarn. I'll show it after, um, but it's done. The sweater's not seamed together, but the front and back panels are done and the two sleeves and I'm just in the process of seaming it. So again, it's the Hana by Junko Okamoto. Lots of cables. I loved knitting this. It was so much fun. And even though there was like eight charts throughout the whole pattern, um, you know, it's the same legend for cables. So by the time you're done the first panel, you, you, you have it in your head. I didn't have to keep rechecking to make sure I'm using the right um, stitch or I don't know it, it was it was good I like Junko Okamoto's patterns are so well written um, you know you can get the pattern and start looking at it and overwhelm yourself but really just just start knitting it and just follow her directions and honestly loved it so uh, a whole front panel and a whole back panel the same and then the two sleeves uh, you seam it all together and I don't know what happened but my first panel had super super loose gauge and I, I know it's because I kept you know watching the chart and reading the legend for the abbreviations of the stitches like what to do and I, I had a really slack gauge my my second panel which was for the front was so much tighter like I was clearly more confident in my knitting and I got tight again so they didn't match up at all like who cares about the width you know you can kind of suck that in with stitching but the length the back panel is a good this much longer than the front front panel and I didn't want to block the front panel to match the back and have it too much of a giant sweater because it's already super oversized I don't know so first things first i talked about the contrast color yarn this is what i went with i dyed it people are gonna love it or hate it it's a lot i know but i was just like oh my gosh i think against this brown it's going to be really pretty and honestly i love it like i said people are, i know some of you are hating this and some of you are loving it I didn't know if I should do fluorescent pink or this, but I'm, I'm really, really happy I went with this neon kind of limey yellow. It's it's different and I need, I need to try to be more different in my knitting with colors because I can be pretty, I can keep the same palette going and breaking out of that. So you take your front and your back panel and you seam together the shoulders so that is done and that is done you then seam on your sleeves so that's done and that's done what's left to do is seaming together the length of the sleeve and the sides of the sweater so I have it tacked. This is how much longer the back panel is than the front panel. It's a lot. So I think what I'm going to do is tack it, like literally hem it. 
I don't know what it's gonna look like. I don't think it's gonna matter. It's gonna be the back of the sweater. So I don't know. I think it's gonna be okay. So I'm almost done. I don't know why I haven't just taken the time to sit and finish this sweater, but I've been distracted and dying for Gage Town. So I am gonna complete this. I would say by this next Friday, it's gonna be done because there's not much to do. Anyway, what do you guys think of the brown and the neon yellow? It's so, I mean, I like it. So it is gonna be oversized. But it's kind of what I wanted. I like everything big. And I will deal with that bottom hem. Oh and let you guys know how it goes. It could be a disaster, but I can't see why. I think it's gonna work. So that is a ton of knitting, and I loved every minute of it. I love cables. So now I have to find another cable sweater. If you have any suggestions, please mention below. Okay, and then I decided to pick up some old whips and just start to finish them. I'm kind of starting to tackle my Christmas knitting of all things because I love, love, love giving. There's a handful of special people in my life that I always like to make sure they get a hand knit present at Christmas time. So this is an old colorway of mine, like probably four years ago. I don't even know what I called it but I loved it and kept one for myself. And here they are. And they're almost like micro striped with this like turquoise blue. It's so pretty. And then all the speckles. So these are gonna be for my son's girlfriend, Emily, for Christmas. So I'm so happy I have those off the needle, which is, I mean, it's, it sounds crazy that I'm Christmas knitting, but my gosh, it's we're already in September. Like, time is flying by. Okay, I finished Dan's socks. Remember I said they were going to be for his birthday? I never got them done. But, I mean, I had gotten him other things for his birthday, too. So, and then when I was in Halifax, I, I got him some fun things at Ikea that he likes for cooking. And some fun Nova Scotia beer. And anyway, so he got some fun goodies. I'm going to save these for Christmas and he's seen me like knitting on these and he's never picked up once that these are for him. So I think, I don't know, it, which is wonderful that I didn't even say well, your birthday presents almost ready. So I'm going to save them for Christmas. And he did say, I think last week, um, if you have time, I would love another pair of homemade socks for Christmas. So there, I got them done and I love this sock yarn. It's so fun. So I get those done. And then another old colorway of mine. I believe it's wildflowers, which I don't have in stock. But um, anyway, it's on that sassy zebra marled yarn. It's got the black through it. And I have one done. So these are gonna be for one of my girlfriends for Christmas, a little pair of shorties. So one's done and one's just working on the foot right now. So all of my sock patterns, I always do a two by two rib. Um, I don't stick to any kind of length for the cuff. I just kind of knit until I feel like it. This one's probably a two inch. That looks like a one inch another one inch um, yeah for men I always cast on 72 stitches ladies 64 stitches and then I just knit in the round and the heel flap flap and gusset and the toe is just always um, knit two together on each end knit around knit two together knit around until I have 12 stitches here and then I Kitchener 
and I think it was 14 stitches here and then Kitchener. So Nancy Wheeler has a rounded toe that I'm going to ask her about. Um, yeah, I wouldn't mind trying a new, a new, um, a new toe if it, if it works. I mean, I, I really like this toe. I find it fits well, especially the heel flap gusset. It, I find that works really well. So I've gotten tons of knitting done and I did a ton of sock knitting, but like I said, I'm, I'm kind of trying to finish up some whips that I had on the go and um, I'm ready to tackle a new project. So my friend June and Michelle and I have decided to knit the Turtle Dove uh, cardigan. It's a free pattern by Melissa from, well, formerly of Espastrico, now of Sonder Yarns. Um, I know we've probably all heard of the Turtle Dove pullover, which is the most brilliant, easy sweater, fits everybody, looks great on everybody. And now she has, um, and I know it's been out for a little while, it's the cardigan version. So we all decided to do that. June ordered a kit from Sonder Yarns, and I almost did too, and then it was like, oh, I couldn't make up my mind on color. Um, and then I got a new basin. So a new base, it's not yet in my shop, and it will be, but I think I'm gonna concentrate on um, getting Gage Town kind of underneath my belt and then dyeing this new base for my shop. And it will be uh, sweater quantity orders, like will be like specialty orders, but it's, the most beautiful base. It is DK. It's 45% baby alpaca, 45% fine merino, and 10% silk. And it's just, it's buttery soft, and you can tell it's going to have the most beautiful drape. So this colorway is called My Girl, and my friend Michelle is doing her turtle dove cardigan in this blue. And I dyed some for myself too because I'm gonna dye, I'm going to um, knit one for my daughter. Her birthday's in November and I think that she would wear this sweater. So, and this color, um, my girl is named after her because I just thought this looks like the color of Sarah's eyes. Like she has the most beautiful, deep denim blue eyes. So I thought it was fitting to make Sarah one. So I'm gonna start hers, maybe uh, maybe tonight, cast on this sweater and get that started. And then I wanna make one for myself. Sorry, I keep playing with my hair. I'm so hot today. Like we've had the warmest fall. It's been the warmest sweater, or sweater, the warmest summer. We haven't gone to Greystone for our Friday night happy hours. We have stood in the pool, which I mean, that's amazing. But Jane and I and Brian and Dan, we have had a lot of pool happy hours. So our Fridays at Greystone have been very minimal. It's just been too hot like to go there and sweat when we could just be in the backyard standing in the pool. So, but today it's another like really hot fall day and I'm just like, I'm so ready for sweater, sweater weather, kind of. I'm not ready for like snow and yuck, but I'm, I'm ready to wear a sweater. So sorry, I keep playing with my hair. I'm just having like warm. Okay, this is what I dyed for myself. So this is gonna be my turtle dove cardigan. And um, there's this this um, store, or online store that I order a lot of my clothes from. It's called Cezanne. And a couple of years ago, they, they have this like famous cardigan. And I ordered it and I got beige. And it's always killed me that I didn't get this color that they have. It's just this beautiful, like, chunky cardigan that buttons up. And one of their colors was this beautiful, striking blue. And I was like, oh, I'm going to be safe. And I got the beige. I am so annoyed that I went with the beige. Like, I'm talking, like, I mean, it's a safe beige. It's good, but... They make the sweater in this color too. So I decided to dye it for myself. This is gonna be my turtle dove cardigan. So three of us have this pattern that we're all gonna start very soon, so I'm excited. 
Okay, I'm going to, I did make notes. What else did I want to tell you about? Um, I guess I could show you my colorways for this weekend. Uh, I always try to do like a, a special colorway for any fiber event. So it's in Gage Town and the area is called, um, it's, I asked Sarah, I'm like, what would you call it? And she's like, well, I would call it the Gage Town Creek. So I decided to do the special colorway called Gage Town Creek and I absolutely love it. I have this new aqua dye color that I couldn't wait to use and it's so pretty. So it's got a lot of nice neutrals in it, but there's a pink, there's that aqua, there's gold, navy, and I did this like light kind of beigey brown base. So that is on sock and it's called Gage Town Creek. I also did it on my MCN DK, the merino cashmere nylon. And the colors take take um, go so much more saturated on this base. And then I also did it on my sweet slubby yarn, which is a fingering weight, but it's got all these like little nubs. So as you can see, each base takes the color a little bit differently. So I'm so happy with how this color turned out. I just think it's beautiful and I rarely keep much of my yarn for myself. I try to, you know, move it out the door because I have a lot, <laughs> but I did keep one of these. So I'm going to make a pair of socks. <clears throat> Sorry, I sound like, oh, terrible. Okay. I also did, people are loving minis still, and I love that you're loving minis. So I did a 13 mini skein bundle, and I'm just calling this, you know, ready for fall. I just tried to do some nice subtle colors, all tonal, no speckles, that just kind of reminded me of fall and the leaves. So I'm going to have these with me. Um, I did this one. This one's called All the Pretty Leaves. Very inspired by the changing of the seasons, the falling leaves. I love that one. And I did this one called Ready for Fall. And this is on the Merino Cashmere DK Base. Super saturated. I love this one. So I've got that. And then for you Halloweenies out there, I did a couple of Halloween colorways. So this one's called Resting Witch Face and it's on my Sassy Zebra Marled. And it comes with three micro minis. And then I did this one, it's called Ghouls Just Wanna Have Fun. And you're able to get this with the three micro minis. Or just by itself. So what else did I want to tell you and show you? I think that's kind of it. Um, to show you that. Oh, a favorite thing. I've shown um, Ula Hendrickson lip balm before, but I've shown just the uh, clear one and that's what I like to put on at night and in the mornings. This is um, a new one and it's called Strawberry sorbet so it's a peptide lip gloss anyway i love it so if you're looking for a new one this is nice and it's not like um super pink it's just got like a sheer pink subtle strawberry taste to it but it's really really nice so you know i love my lip glosses and I get inspired by, her name's Danielle. I found her on TikTok and if you know, you know, she's like the caviar queen. She has a YouTube channel now and um, I am influenced by her so hard. She, I love everything she has, everything she does. I just think she's beautiful and her 
sense of fashion and her beauty suggestions, all of that. So I love products and I, I love trying a new product. So she recommended this. I just picked it up at Shoppers Drug Mart on my way home. It's called the Double Serum Hydric and uh, what, what, what's it say? Complete Age Defying Concentrate. It's made by Clarins. So it's a serum that you use underneath your moisturizer in the morning and the evening. So I'm gonna give this a try. And um, I don't know, I'm 51. I'm, I love trying to just be very mindful of taking care of my skin and trying new products. So I'll let you know what I think. But So this is a new to me. I just picked it up today, but maybe some of you have heard it and maybe some of you are using it. Let me know. Um, what else? I think that's it. I'm, I sound horrible. So it's probably an annoying voice to listen to. Uh, I just wanted to get on and catch up. I, I don't even know. I think this is episode 38 or 39. Um, yeah, but maybe this weekend I can get some footage of the craft show if it's not pouring out and then share that in my next vlog. And what else is coming up? Harvest Jazz and Blues. Fredericton hosts a huge, um, music venue it shuts down our downtown and there's tents everywhere there's food trucks there's live music there's tickets um we we did get tickets for one tent so i'll get footage of that too and, and share that so anyway i hope everybody's doing well and has had like a great summer and thanks for all the uh, messages people have been messaging just asking how i'm making out with selling and moving and all that stuff and honestly like it's been it hasn't been stressful i'm glad that the house sold like that's off my plate um but the building like i said like if you just deal with the right people in the first place i think it yeah it just speaks for itself you just no no surprises no problems i'm i'm so excited with everything that i've picked out because some things i picked out like a year ago and um yeah this whole process no regrets I have not made one regretful decision so my heart is happy my mind is sane everything is good um, yeah and we did we had a wonderful summer just it flew by so I'm, I'm looking forward to the fall though looking forward to moving and nesting making making this new house a home and picking away it just yeah making it cozy Oh, yeah, I guess that's it. I um, I did want to mention, like, people who do follow some of my journaling adventures. Um, there goes half my... Um, if you followed me for a while, you know I, I journal. And it's a little bit of, you know, keeping a diary, keeping memories, um art journaling, a little bit of everything. So I've always used the A5 size. A5 is this size. A6 is a little bigger. I use the A5 Cousin Avec. So in this journal you have a section where it's broken up into a month. So you can open it here. I'll show, I'll show you as I speak. So I like this one because, let's say for instance, and it's not even that I'm really good about keeping all of the blocks filled in, but like let's say for February, um, I like having a page just to open up and see what's happening that month, like dentist appointment, um, you know, someone's birthday, as opposed to keeping it on my, page where I could lose sight of something happening until I get to that day. So the beginning of the journal, it's a monthly. So you can have all these blocks filled out. Um, it can be your monthly reminder. The next section is called the weeks. So you get the days of your weeks broken down from Monday to Sunday. The whole length is broken up. I like to I like to use this for meals. And doing this kind of, you know, 
not only keeps track of what we've had, but sometimes when you just kind of lose ideas, you can kind of flip back like a month and say, oh, I should make that. We haven't had that in a while. So, and then going forward, then you have your days. So a, a page is committed to a full day. This whole page is blank. It's just kind of a grid. And um, you know, that's where I decorate it. So I would say this is where I journal and art journal. It's like a diary. Um, and then the weeks are for meal planning. And then the months are for appointments and birthdays and all that fun stuff. So right now you can pre-order your Hobonichi for 2025. So like I said, I like the Hobonichi A5 Cousin Avec. It's got all those three different things going on in one journal. Um, I like the size. You can also order that in a six month, um, like a two six month books instead of the one 12 month. I mean, it does get pretty thick, but I think that's what I like. Like all my old ones are, I keep them all. Oh, I don't know where to dig them out. But I think I like having the great big one, but if you, if you wanted them, you know, smaller so they don't get quite as bulky when you're writing in them. You can get the two six month ones. Uh, so I ordered mine from uh, Paper Plus Cloth. It's a journaling supply store in Toronto. Uh, but I know if you're in the States, there's pre-orders for with Nico Neko, Yoseka, Pinky Elephant, um, Hobonichi itself. Yeah, so those pre-orders are right now. So if you want to get your journal for 2025, they're available. And yeah, we've been watching um, for TV. We decided to rewatch House of Dragons season one. So, so if you like Game of Thrones, you have to watch House of Dragon. It's um, but it was I think two years ago that we watched season one, and now that season two's out, we we watched the recap, but we were still like, ah, oh, I need a refresher. So every night we've been watching one episode and we're finally done. We started season two last night. It's amazing. I love that whole series. And I'm not that person that likes, you know, the fantastical, you know, wizards and dragons and all that stuff. This is different. I love, love, love this whole series. Um, also kind of getting through the bear. Um, it stresses Dan out if there's too many conversations and fighting and screaming going on, but it has its moments for sure. But I'm enjoying the bear. Um, what else did I just watch? Oh, Love is Blind UK. Loved it. I love that franchise. I've watched, I've watched all of them. And yeah, sometimes that mindless dirt is like, it's good for the soul. <laughs> So, okay, I'm going to say goodbye because I know I'm getting like really raspy and sound terrible, but I'm going to go maybe cast on this and get ready for Saturday. I've got a lot of, I got a lot of yarn winding to do and packing. My office is a mess. It's been the catch-all for everything lately. So I'm going to straighten up a bit, make a list of everything I need to pack for Saturday because yeah, I could easily forget something very important. I haven't done a yarn show in so long. I'm so excited. So I hope to see you there. Um, come visit me if you are a local. And I hope you enjoy my new colorways. Okay, well, have a good weekend, everybody. I guess it's the weekend eve, Thursday. We are going to, yeah, we'll have that event on Saturday. And then Sunday, we said, uh, let's start packing. The main stuff like i've got to put so much away i'm ready though it's time so i hope to see you guys all soon um hopefully it won't take me another couple of months to get back and share what i'm making and share some life so take care thank you please like and subscribe and i will see you guys in probably another month okay bye mm -hmm.